Hello everyone, I'll explain in detail about black body radiation, which is a very important concept to understand before diving into quantum mechanics. If you want to know why we study quantum mechanics, you must understand black body radiation first. Before we start, let me ask you something. We have two pots of boiling water. One has the red flame, and the other one has the blue flame, as you can see. Which one is a stronger flame? I mean, which one is a hotter fire? If you aren't sure, you could ask your friends or your family about this question. They will say that the blue fire is stronger than the red fire. You know how red light has a lower frequency and blue light has a higher frequency? In fact, you probably learned that energy equals Planck constant times frequency, which means higher frequency gives higher energy. So that's why the blue fire is stronger than the red fire. Again, a higher frequency gives a stronger energy, okay? Let's remember that. Many of you are likely here because you were confused about how sun is considered a black body in the class, right? Sun is like the brightest object we know, and black body sounds like completely the opposite. But physicists didn't mean that. They didn't mean sun is a black body because it has a body that is black, no. If you understood it that way, let me ask you this. We see a green cup here. So by your expectation, this should be a green body, right? Because it looks green. But why is the cup green? Is it because the cup emits green light towards you? Probably not, right? Probably because there's another light source that shines at the cup and only green light happens to reflect off the surface of the cup effectively and reaches our eyes. This is just a reflection. This shouldn't be called a green body, but a green reflecting body. Wouldn't that be more accurate? What I'm trying to say is, physicists aren't talking about the reflection, they are talking about the emission. The reason why you couldn't understand that the sun is a black body is because you're thinking about the reflection. Then it is of course confusing. Physicists define black body as follows. Black body is a body that absorbs light, which is radiation, with perfect efficiency at all frequencies. And by the Kirchhoff's law, it should emit light with perfect efficiency at all frequencies as well. What they mean is this. This guy has a green absorbing body, let's say. Since his body can easily collect green, he should also release green, right? So we could also say that the guy has a green emitting body. It would be the same thing. Again, you see, we're not talking about the reflection anymore, eh? When we talk about a green body, we're talking about green actually emitting body. Now, this guy has a black body, let's say. Above here, it says black body absorbs and emits light at all frequencies, so all colors. Then all light should come in and go out from this guy. Okay, so let's think about it. What can absorb all the colors? Which color shirt would you wear in a very hot summer? Forget about fashion. Forget about your artistic preference. You're trying to survive in hot weather, okay? Again, if you're not sure, ask your friends or your family. If you wear the black t-shirt, you'll absorb all the heat gained from the sun. You're gonna get all sweaty. But the white shirt will reflect all light. That's why we see the shirt as white, actually. Doesn't it make sense? Black body. And one more thing. You might be thinking that the black shirt doesn't emit light. No, the black shirt doesn't reflect light. It can still emit light when it's heated up, you know? Although the shirt will just burn before we can even see that happening. The black shirt can emit light, and when it emits light, it will emit all color. Trust me. In that sense, the sun is a black body. Does it now make more sense? Because it emits light at all frequencies. And to do that, it should first contain energy at all frequencies.
Ho, oh, now this is really important. If you skip this part in your textbook or class, you shouldn't expect to understand quantum mechanics. About 120 years ago, when we didn't have much knowledge about radiation, we had this Boltzmann distribution that describes the relationship between temperature and energy. If you want to know where this comes from, I recommend you watching this video that I made. The mean energy can be calculated from this distribution as follows. And for calculating the mean energy, you could also watch this video that I made. Anyway, you'll get KT. So mean energy as a function of temperature, because this K is a constant. Now we're going to talk about Rayleigh Jeans formula, which talks about the spectral energy density. Energy density is joules per meters cubed. But spectral energy density is joules per meters cubed per hertz. So energy density for each frequency, that's what it means. This is the Rayleigh genes formula, and I can show you the derivation later if you're interested. All right, so don't worry. According to the Boltzmann distribution, assuming that the energy is a continuous variable, meaning we can use integral for integrating it, E equals to KT, right? So the energy density is this. Simple. Now, try to plot this as a function of frequency. It will be a quadratic function since we have nu squared here, right? Here comes the biggest problem now. You remember we said black body emits radiation at all frequencies? Then what is the total energy density in the black body? Integral is the area under the curve, right? Wouldn't this approach infinity? Wait, then does that mean the sun, which is known as a black body, emits infinite amount of energy? No way! If that is the case, the entire universe will burn, don't you think? Ultraviolet catastrophe. Physicists used the word ultraviolet at that time, probably because that is the strongest color we can see, and I think they just wanted to scare people or something. Or maybe there's another reason, I don't know. Anyway, I don't find that important. From actual observations, they didn't see that happening, obviously, otherwise we wouldn't even be here. But they did see that it at least partially matches with their predictions. The dotted line is the curve from the left plot, so it partially matches, at least that is something. But the observations didn't show the indefinite increase in energy density, instead it peaked at a certain point and went down again. That's some extra knowledge. The problem is the energy being considered as a continuous variable. Max Planck proposed an interesting idea in 1900. Let me read this. Entropy means disorder. And I thought that one should find this disorder in the irregularity with which even in a completely stationary radiation field like you see here, he says stationary radiation field. He's talking about the standing waves that go with n harmonics. So he's talking about treating energy as a discrete variable. Hmm, very interesting, eh? You know, normally we would go from discrete to continuous to generalize concepts. But this guy suggested the opposite transition. He wants to change energy from continuous to discrete variables. That's an interesting suggestion. Let's see what happens if we treat the energy as a discrete variable. We can no longer use the integral, so let's use the summation instead. So this was from the Boltzmann distribution. Energy is the nh nu. Hmm, let's cancel these kts here. Take a look at this expression. Do you notice anything? Not yet? Let me rearrange more. I'm gonna let x equals that and just take out h nu, since we are summing over n, how about now? Still no? Here, look, I'll take out 1x here. Again, we are summing over n, so it's okay to take out x. Do you see something now? The top one can be written as the derivative of the x to the n, right? 
And because sigma x to the n is algebraically 1 over 1 minus x, we can rewrite the equation like this. So this is the crucial key. And let's actually take the derivative. Simplifying it. Oh, look what we have. Our mean energy now looks different. When energy was a continuous variable, our mean energy was kt. But when it was a discrete variable, the mean energy was h nu over e to the h nu over kt minus 1. Then the energy density for the discrete case would be expressed like this. So this was the previous plot. And you know what happened here? If we plot that function, we get a different shape. Huh. That shape looks very familiar. The actual data well matches the shape of this graph. This gotta be it. So this suggests that treating energy as a discrete variable is appropriate. In other words, by quantifying the energy level, we were able to avoid the ultraviolet catastrophe. Quantifying energy. Quantum. Alright, so I'll show you how Rayleigh Jean's formula was derived. This is just an extra stuff. Suppose we have a radiation field trapped in a box forming a standing wave. So when the length of the box is exactly half of the wavelength, so one round trip going here and coming back here, exactly matches one lambda. It is the first harmonic. This took two lambdas for the round trip, so second harmonic, third harmonic, and etc. Also, these harmonics could form in different directions, like this, right? Like this too. So the harmonic numbers are multiples of L, which is the length of the box, divided by the half lambda. Yeah, just for simplicity, I'm just considering a cube. So the length, width, and height are all L, okay? This is a graphical representation of all possible harmonics with combinations of L, M, and N. So for example, if the maximum numbers for L, M, and N are 3, 3, 3, let's say, then there could be 27 different combinations. So 27 different harmonics, right? Something like that. So this box would contain 27 dots or data. Uh, physicists prefer using spherical coordinates. So let's just simplify this by introducing radial parameter, rho. So we can rewrite like this. Then the total number of harmonics could be the volume of the sphere. Now, can we have a negative number harmonic? For example, negative second harmonic or something. Does that make sense? No, we can only have positive number harmonics. So divide by 8. And now I want to replace lambda with k, which is a wave number. That's not the Boltzmann constant, okay? That's wave number k. So lk over pi. Then d rho should be ldk over pi, right? So far so good. So this integral is going to become like this. L cube is the volume of the box, so v. And now radiation is formed by electric and magnetic fields like this, right? And we must distinguish these two different cases. They aren't the same. So just multiply by 2. Then the total number of possible harmonics is this. So what were these harmonics about? Each harmonic represents an energy level of radiation. You remember this from the beginning? The lower harmonic is the lower energy level. The upper harmonic is the higher energy level. Okay? Alright, this is the last slide. We're almost there. Energy density is joules per meters cube. So total energy divided by the volume, obviously. Total energy could be the average energy times the number of energy levels, and volume is just V. So by plugging in what we derived just before, and converting the wave number K into 2 pi frequency over the speed of light, we get this. Since this is the energy density, 
the spectral energy density, which is per frequency, is just this. Good luck on your study.